Hey, and welcome back to another video. So in this video, we'll be taking a look at the Nokia Lumia 1520 from 2014 and answering the question of whether this phone is still usable here in 2021 with respect to its design, its display, its hardware, and most importantly, its software experience on Windows Phone 10 with respect to applications and application support here in 2021. Now, we'll be mainly focusing on Windows Phone 10 on this phone. However, I do have another phone over here that is running the Windows 8.1 Denim update, which was the first update that this phone got from Windows Phone 8. So it was initially shipped with Windows Phone 8, then it was updated to 8.1 Denim, and then finally Windows Phone 10. However, like I said, we'll be focusing mainly on Windows Phone 10 with a little bit of support from Windows Phone 8.1 as uh, Windows Phone 10 is the final update and carries all the major features that finally was available for Windows Phone and is generally better than Windows Phone 8.1 in every single aspect. Before we jump right in, don't forget to smash that like button as it helps this video get on YouTube's algorithm and also hit that subscribe button down below uh, if you want to see more content from me and ring that bell notification button next to the subscribe button so you're notified whenever I upload a new video. I'm on Instagram, Discord and Twitter and you can follow me on those using the links down in the description below. Alrighty, now let's jump right into this video. So firstly, for a bit of history, uh, the Lumia 1520 alongside the cheaper Lumia 1320 uh, were released in 2014 and instantly redefined the term phablet, meaning phone slash tablet hybrid, uh, alongside phones like the Xperia Z Ultra. And uh, the Xperia Z Ultra is slightly bigger than the 1320 and the 1520, but uh, once you've held one of these things, you will realize how huge this phone is and that carries on to it being the largest windows phone ever released physically it is also larger than the uh, 950 xl as well and um, it also has the biggest display of any windows phone ever released at six inches the 950 xl's display is also 5.7 inches so this easily takes the cake for the biggest phone physically and uh, the biggest display on any windows phone also when it was released it was released as the successor to the Nokia Lumia 1020 uh, from the previous year 2013 and its successor would eventually become the Lumia 950XL uh, after two years and this phone is still considered to be one of the greatest uh, Nokia Windows phones ever released and easily one of the greatest Windows phones released and my favorite Windows phone of all time now that may change when I get my hands on the Nokia Lumia McLaren prototype that I ordered. And yes, I did get my hands on a McLaren prototype. So um, this might just become the uh, my favorite released Windows phone because the McLaren prototype was never released, but we'll have to see. Anyway, that was just a bit of history. Now let's go on to talking about the design and build quality of this phone. So we can go ahead and power the two phones on. We have the Windows 8.1 on the left and the Windows 10 on the right. And I just like to say, uh, I apologize for the state of these phones. They are scratched up and this one's cameras are actually broken. I made a video over there. You can go see about the cameras on this phone and one of the lights is missing here. Um, so I really don't uh, have the uh, capacity to buy a brand new one. So I'm stuck with these used ones, uh, which will do the job just fine. So as you can see, Windows 8.1 loads much faster than Windows 10. Uh, so let's keep that to a side over there, lock this one and have a look over the phone. So up front, we have the speaker grill and the Nokia branding over there. We also have AT&T branding over there and that's only specific to AT&T phones. Uh, the light sensor is under there. As you can see on camera, it is blinking. That is the light sensor. And uh, the front facing camera is down there. At the bottom here, we have uh, touch capacitive buttons over there. As you can see, the lights uh, on the capacitive buttons and a pretty sleek minimalist front with uh, medium sized chins for its time period. Uh, moving on to this side, we have the volume rockers, which feel really great. We have the power button and we have the camera shutter button as well. So half press to focus, full press to take a photo. Up, up at the top, we have the uh, single 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and that's about it at the top. 
On this side, we have the uh, expansion slots. We have the micro SD expansion slot and the SIM card slot as well. Both use the uh, tool uh, mechanism to pop out. So you'll need the tool for that. And at the bottom, we have the micro USB port as well. And there is a microphone hidden under the display over there, as you can see. At the back here, we have a speaker down here, the single firing speaker. And there is also a microphone down here hidden next to the speaker. We have a uh, wireless charging connectors here to attach a wireless charging case to this. Uh, some of these phones had inbuilt wireless charging uh, into the body. However, um, the AT&T model did not have one as far as I remember. And my two of them do not have them either when I put them on the charger. Uh, we have the camera up here and the dual LED flash as well. It also has PureView Zeiss branding there. Uh, it's much more clear on this phone, uh, PureView Zeiss branding. And up here we have the recording microphone for the camera as well. And I believe there is another microphone hidden under the display over here. So a total of four microphones. In terms of feel in the hand, like I said earlier, this phone feels massive. It feels absolutely huge and it's rightfully so because here's an iPhone 12 Pro Max next to it. And as you can see, the 12 Pro Max is also a big phone, but I don't know really how to convey this to you. This phone feels massive, even though it's not physically uh, as massive. Now, for example, here's a uh, Motorola One 5G UW. This phone is clearly bigger than the 1520. It's huge. However, again, the 1520 feels bigger for some reason, and it may be due to its well-built polycarbonate body. Now, the polycarbonate body uh, is a, something that I've always praised, the polycarbonate unibody from Nokia phones. And when Microsoft bought uh, the Nokia uh, phone business, they kind of screwed the design up and they kind of ditched the polycarbonate body in later models like the 950 and the 950 XL. And that was kind of a huge downgrade. The only phone, com phone company to ever rival physical metal bodies with plastic was Nokia with their polycarbonate bodies. These polycarbonate bodies are really solid and they feel really nice in the hand. And they were cheaper to build than metal bodies and they also felt identical and um, they, they felt as solid, and well, not as solid, but almost as solid as a metal body. So Nokia did bodies really well. Microsoft kind of screwed, screwed it up. So a really uh, solid feeling phone in the hand, feels secure, feels huge. And uh, I really like the way uh, its overall design is. So the display on the Nokia Lumia 1520 is a gorgeous six inch IPS LCD panel. And this was one of the IPS LCD phones that Nokia did back in the day. They were kind of dabbling between AMOLED on the 1020 and previously the 920 had an IPS LCD panel. Then the 1520 and the 1320 had an IPS LCD panel as well. So they were going back and forth between AMOLED and IPS LCD. Nevertheless, uh, this thing is six inches and it's huge, like I said earlier. Uh, IPS LCD panel, full 1080p, so 1080 by 1920 pixels with a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, which gives it a rough pixel density of around 367 pixels per inch. Uh, it is protected by Gorilla Glass 2 and has Nokia's clear black display technology as well. Uh, the display on this thing, like I said, is gorgeous. Uh, the colors are very accurate for their time. Uh, let's speak obviously with relevance to its time and its technology. The colors are accurate. They're not overly saturated. They pop, they're bright, uh, and they uh, are not like sore to the eyes if you look at them too much. They're actually very, very accurate for an LCD panel back in the day. Uh, the outdoor performance is phenomenal. This thing's display goes to a very high brightness when set to a maximum brightness setting and it doesn't reflect too much light onto your face. So uh, it's easy on the eyes as well in a brightly lit condition. So overall, a very solid display and I'm perfectly happy with watching uh, videos and YouTube stuff and whatever on this phone here in 2020. I actually watch a lot of videos on the uh, 8.1 phone over here and I'm perfectly happy with the display. It's a perfectly usable display here in 2021 easily beats out lower uh, uh, lower end phones from 2021 and maybe even some mid-range phones. I'd say some because mid-range phones have got really good displays these days. However, this thing can easily beat a lot of lower end phones uh, in the uh, LCD department and even some AMOLED phones, honestly, if you, uh, if you do some research into it. But anyway, an overall very solid display and perfectly usable here in 2021.
It also has the glance screen feature where you can see your clock and the date even when the phone is locked as well as tap to wake. Looking under the hood of the Nokia Lumia 1520, we can see that it's powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon 800 quad-core processor clocked in at 2.2 GHz and it's built on a 28 nanometer scale. The variant of the Snapdragon 800 on this phone is the MSM8974, so MSM8974 Qualcomm Snapdragon 800 quad-core 2.2 GHz. The graphics processor on this phone is an Adreno 330 and this phone has a micro SD expansion slot up to 64 4 gigs and 16 and 32 gig storage options each with 2 gigs of RAM. The uh, RAM and the processor and all the general tech specs of this phone as I've said earlier in all my Windows phone videos which are quite plenty at this moment you can go find them out on my channel. I've done a lot of Windows phone videos and time and time and again I keep telling you that Windows Phone did not need that much processing power or RAM. It was one of the best uh, RAM management uh, OSs out there. It managed RAM really well, kind of like iOS, and uh, it did need did not need too much processing power on its own. And that also carries on to today. As you can see, the phone is very smooth and moves around, and you can easily navigate the interface even so many years after it was released. Um, this phone is just fine when it comes to uh, low-end specs, running Windows Phone because Windows Phone uh, does not need that much processing power and we'll talk more about this in the software section of this video which is coming up now. So in terms of software, the first 1520 I have here is running the 8.1 Denim update. I'm keeping it on that OS just for uh, nostalgia purposes. And the other one is running Windows Phone 10, which was the final update. Windows Phone is easily my most favorite operating system after iOS. Now it's Android, obviously, but at the time, uh, I liked this over Android because of the customization, the color customization, the uh, menus that used to change color, the notification center slash control center, which which was also color coded to the menus and most importantly the tile wallpapers and the uh, ability to put a photo or whatever you please as a uh, wallpaper on the tiles or make it trans make the tiles transparent and put the wallpaper behind them that's something that i really really loved obviously windows phone was not as customized customizable as android however it was still very, very customizable and it felt just different. It felt great, it felt different, and I honestly loved it for what it was. Overall, uh, a very, very solid OS. Sad to see it go, but it just failed because uh, of the lack of apps and whenever apps did come for it, they, they came late after iOS and Android and they were unpolished. They used the browser and you know these general things that I tell if you're a common uh, viewer on this channel. I've done so many videos with Windows Phone. Uh, the uh, common reasons that Windows Phone died off were the apps mainly coming late and not being polished, etc, etc. Uh, but still, uh, we have these old phones lying around uh, to remind us what a great OS Windows Phone was. In terms of performance here in 2021, Windows Phone 10, like I said earlier in the hardware section, performs just well with this uh, basic minimum hardware. The apps open fast, they run properly, the ones that actually do run, because a lot of apps don't run anymore. The ones do that do run uh, open and they run fast. The multitasking works fast. There's no stutter when you're multitasking or when you have a lot of apps open in the background. The uh, performance, as you can see here, is just very fluid with absolutely no stutter at all and it is a very solid experience for what it is here in 2021. Now for software support, uh, obviously uh, the apps and stuff are no longer updated. Uh, in 2019, all the major um, social media apps took their apps off the store for security reasons because an unsupported app store is not very secure. But Trust me, if you have logged into an older app, you you already have it downloaded, delete, uh, basically log out of your app and delete it because, or you can just keep it, but just log out of your app because uh, the security is very out of date and it's just a potential for people to get into your accounts. Also, there are a lot of dummy fake accounts claiming to be uh, port accounts from Instagram and Facebook on the App Store or the I keep calling it the app store, but I'm referring to the Windows Phone store. Uh, these apps will steal your data, so absolutely do not log into them. Uh, these apps include stuff like this, uh, WhatsApp DP, iTube Pro Free Music, UTV, YouTube, 
do not download these apps or log into uh, your accounts from these apps because your data will be stolen. <clears throat> these apps are not trustable whatsoever. If you really need to use social media, use your browser and we'll be doing a browser demo as well. But then again, the browser isn't that great either. However, the apps that do work, certain games and stuff, they will run just fine. However, just remember they are all out of date and uh, they will probably be shut off completely in the future and we're not sure how far that will go. The Windows Phone Store will still remain and there's a lot of apps that are visible that are only available on PC for some reason but not available on Windows Phone that also appear on Windows Phone. For example, we have the iTunes Store here um, and the iTunes Store is obviously not for Windows Phone but it's still available for PC but it, it does appear uh, on the uh, Windows Phone uh, store, so that's a bit strange, but either way, uh, just be wary of the apps available and just remember that the ones that do run will not run perfectly and most of them will not run to begin with. Now for a browser demo, and we'll be using the Edge browser here, the uh, Edge or Explorer browser, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but if you have another browser already installed, you can use that. And there's a few more other browsers that are available on the store that still work. However, I'll just use Edge uh, as the basis. So firstly, let's load up a heavier website, uh, which, what am I typing firstly? I've completely lost my mind. So Apple, let's load up Apple's website because it's one of the uh, hardest websites to load up. We'll see how it performs on Apple's website. So Apple official site. We'll see how the animations and stuff load. So it's loading halfway on this side. The animations have not loaded in properly. Uh, it loaded in much better on the, fifth, the, on the 920, 950XL, but uh, on this, it doesn't wanna seem to load properly. So it does load and it'll work, uh, but not ideally. Let's load the iPhone page here. Um, now it's kind of freaking out. Oh, okay, so there it loaded much better. Uh, it loaded much better. There's a bit of lag on the browser as you saw there. So the iPhone page of it loads much fine. The animations won't work perfectly, but as you see the page loaded just fine. Uh, let's load Microsoft's uh, page. Microsoft. Let's load their website over here. Bit of time it takes. Uh, there's a bit of lag on the browser. So the browser is not as fluid as the OS, but it's still very, very usable for just browsing through the internet, maybe reading a book, something like that online. But as you can see, the Microsoft website also loaded fine. And if you just want to go straight to Google, you can go to Google as well. <clears throat> the default search engine is Bing, but you can set it to Google in the settings. And as you can see, that loaded pretty fast as well. It depends on your Wi-Fi, but most password protected Wi-Fi networks, and I believe all actually, all pr password protected Wi-Fi networks will work on this phone here in 2021. So that was the browser demo. Now for a game demo, and like I said in my 950XL video as well, games like Asphalt 8, which are heavier titles, will not run at all. Uh, if they do manage to get into the setup menu, uh, it will still be kind of buggy and you won't be able to get past the setup menu. As you can see here, the Asphalt logo is out of uh, screen here. There's a big bar up there. It's not in focus and uh, it, there's, it might crash, it, it might just get stuck here. Uh, it mostly crashes on this phone, so there you go, uh, it crashed. So you really can't play heavier titles, but games like Wings on Fire, which I uh, uh, basically demoed in the 950XL video as well, will work just fine. So if you want a game on this thing, you're gonna have to go for uh, lower end titles like that. So let me demo this game again and show you what it's like. So as you can see, titles like this will work just fine. The accelerometer works fine with the games and uh, I actually can play this game uh, to a very high level um, without any issues. That's because it still runs just fine. And I've played this game uh, a long time ago as well on multiple different Windows devices and it was always a fun game. But uh, these are the kind of games that you will get to play because uh, the heavier titles are not working on this phone. But yeah, as you can see, it works just fine. So that was a game demo for the, nine, uh, for the uh, Lumia 1520. 
Okay, time to discuss the second most important feature on this phone after the operating system, which is its camera. And after all, it is a Nokia phone, so the camera has to be good. And this phone's camera does not disappoint whatsoever. So let's go over the technical specifications of the camera first and then get into detail. So the camera on this thing is a 20 megapixel shooter with an f2.4 aperture uh, and a 26 millimeter wide angle lens. Uh, it has autofocus and optical image stabilization as well. As you can see here, it has Carl Zeiss optics with a dual LED flash as well. And it also supports panorama uh, photography as well. Uh, it can record video at 4K at 30 FPS. But in this video, we'll be doing 1080p at 30 FPS because this video is shot at 1080p. So we'll be sticking to 1080p 30 FPS. And this video recording is also done with stereo sound from the uh, microphone that I showed you up here. So that is the uh, rear camera on this phone. Now I'll keep this phone to the side because I told you earlier that this phone's front camera is missing if you watch that video that I showed you earlier and bring this one into the picture. So the front camera on the 1520 is a 1.2 megapixel f2.4 aperture camera uh, that can shoot video at 720p at 30 fps. So now I can show you the camera interface on the 1520 as well and over here we have the advanced features and continuing on from that I'd like to say that none of these advanced features will be uh, used in the camera samples as I'm trying to emulate an average user experience here so none of the professional advanced settings will be altered and everything will be set to auto and let the phone do its thing uh, that's how I do camera comparisons everything is set to auto to basically simulate what an average user would have done back in the day most of these samples, well, all of these samples actually are from this video, which I already did, the 1520 versus the 12 Pro Max. I'm reusing those samples because I put a lot of effort in taking really good photos with those samples, so I won't be able to replicate those again. So if you've already seen them, you know exactly what they look like. However, the 12 Pro Max samples won't be here and the 1520 samples will be full screen. So maybe you'll get a better picture of what the photos are like. So samples during the day and during the night, including video recording as well. Uh, down here, we have our settings application, which you can change the grid patterns and the aspect ratios and stuff, the flash settings, etc., etc. Down here, we have video and panorama as well. And towards this side, we have the gallery as well. So a pretty minimalist camera interface. And oh, up here is the front camera switcher as well, which you can see there. So that is the camera interface. So now we can move on to the camera samples. Firstly, we're gonna have some daytime samples followed by daytime video, and then some selfie samples, and then nighttime uh, photo samples followed by nighttime video, and also include nighttime, photo sa uh, nighttime selfie samples as well. So now let's roll the camera samples for the Nokia Lumia 1520.
So as you saw with those images, the Nokia Lumia 1520 still takes amazing photos, especially during the daytime. And even the video quality was really good. Uh, the stereo sound recording works perfectly even after so many years, the microphones are still good. So big thumbs up on that. The nighttime photography can be better uh, if you mess with those ISO and uh, other settings that I mentioned earlier, but for, uh, basically simulation of an average user basis. I will not be messing, like I said, I won't be messing with those settings, but you can still go ahead and mess with those settings and you might bet, get better uh, results out of it in nighttime photography. Um, I'd easily say this thing beats out all the lower end phones uh, of 2020 and 2021 in camera performance. And uh, I think it could compete with a mid mid range or an upper mid range from 2020 and 2021-ish, um, but it definitely cannot compete with the higher end phones from modern times, but still a very solid performer here in 2021 in terms of camera. So now for the speaker demo, let's make sure the volume is up max. Now the speaker on this thing is not a stereo speaker, it is a mono speaker, but it's towards the louder side and it's a bit tinny, but not too bad. So let's play my 950 video that I did earlier and we'll demo the speaker from that. video. So in this video, we'll be taking a look at the Microsoft Lumia 950 XL and answering the question of whether this phone is still usable in 2021. Now, I already did a video on the Lumia 950, which you can find up there last year in 2020. Uh, so that was the speaker demo for this phone. So now we can talk about power and battery performance and the Lumia 1520 and 1320 for their times. Uh, had probably the largest batteries on any phones and probably easily uh, some of the best battery performers in the market at the time. So the 1520's battery is a huge, again, by relevance to its time, a huge 3,400 milliamp hour non-removable lithium ion battery. And the model number of the battery, if you want to know, is a BV4BW. So BV4BW, if you need to replace yours. And the battery performance numbers were phenomenal and they were up to around 770 hours of standby on 2G and around 760 hours of standby on 3G. The talk time on 2G was around 28 hours and the talk time on 3G was around 26 hours. And this phone could continuously play, play music out of a small pair of earbuds, so not headphones, but a small pair of earbuds. This thing could continuously play music for up to 124 hours from a full charge. So that's an amazing uh, battery uh, life specifications for this phone. However, these tests were carried out in 2014 and these phones are old and their batteries have weakened over time. So this one's battery is pretty damn good, even uh, despite its damage and stuff. The other the one's battery uh, is not as good as this but still this battery will last about a day that will also probably last about a day maybe less than a day but the uh, if you're thinking of buying one of these phones definitely consider looking at the battery uh, and maybe you may have to replace the battery uh, but I didn't have to but you may have to replace it on yours depending on the battery's condition just remember this thing was released over seven years ago so the battery definitely has degraded over time so those were the battery performance numbers for the 1520. Now, I mentioned earlier that the AT&T version of the 1520 does not have QI certified wireless charging. So if you want one with QI certified wireless charging, you'll have to get the non AT&T version. So any other one other than the AT&T version is uh, basically comes with uh, QI certified wireless charging out of the box. And if you do have an AT&T version and you really want wireless charging, you'll either have to mod the back uh, case here. There is a, I think there's a mod online that you can do to give it wireless charging or if you're not tech savvy you can buy the case which i don't know if that's even still available that will go on the back and connect with these three pins and the case has the wireless charging pad and you can put the case on the wireless charger but just know out of the box the at&t version of this phone does not have qi certified wireless charging if you want that you have to get the non-at&t version basically any version uh, other than the at&t version has wireless charging so for the final burning question, which is, should you buy this phone here in 2021? 
And with what you saw throughout this video, it's kind of obvious the answer is no. Uh, there's just so much of issues with this and not necessarily with the phone itself. The hardware on this phone is still great and still good to go. The issue is the operating system. It's just so limited with the lack of apps, the lack of security updates, the browser not being too great and just a general myriad of problems. So it really does not seem to be a viable option and you'd be better off getting a Android phone or an iPhone. Maybe using this as a secondary phone just for calls and messages, maybe, but uh, that's up to you. But I just recommend uh, not doing that. But if you wanna buy a f the, the phone for nostalgia purposes or just you wanna experience it somewhat uh, like what I did, because I never owned one of these back when it was released. So uh, if you have the ability to do that, go right ahead. You can get one of these for about uh, 20 to 50 dollars in with a few issues 50 to 100 dollars in good condition and uh, 100 dollars and above in excellent condition um, and you can keep checking eBay. If you get the green model, by the way, uh, that the green model is really nice, but it's kind of rare. So uh, if you can get your hands on a green model, that'd be better. But at the end of the day, it's not really worth using Windows Phone here in 2021 as your main daily driver. Either way, as usual, I hope this video uh, was enjoyable for you. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you honestly like this video, please leave a like on this video as it helps this video get on YouTube's algorithm. Also hit that subscribe button and ring that bell notification down below so you're notified whenever I upload a new video. I'm on Instagram, Discord, and Twitter. You can follow me on those using the links down in the description below. Thumbs up and I'll see you guys in my next video.